to prison for a crime they didn't commit. Hi, I'm Luminic, Chief Film Critic of the New York Post, here with a review of The A-Team. It couldn't have been easy making a movie with less plot, character development, and dramatic credibility than an episode of a campy 80s TV series. It's a feat somehow managed by Joe Carnahan's overlong, overblown, and utterly forgettable big screen reboot of The A-Team. The cartoonish, usually popular series about a quartet of special services misfits who turned soldiers of fortune after being framed for a crime they didn't commit is primarily remembered as a vehicle for the inimitable Mr. T, who found the role of a lifetime as the muscular driver B.A. Baracus. Pity his poor successor, lightweight martial arts champ turned lightweight actor Quentin Rampage Jackson. I'm told you're a hell of a chopper pilot. The best, sir. I'm not getting on the chopper with this nut job. Dominating the film instead is Bradley Cooper, the newly minted star of The Hangover, who lets his abs do most of the acting. George Papard's old role of team leader Hannibal Smith has been taken by Oscar winner Liam Neeson, whose recent run of paycheck jobs is beginning to resemble Laurence Olivier's late period. Apparently they didn't pay Neeson enough to get his perfectly serviceable American accent. Under the circumstances, the film is stolen, petty larceny really, by South African actor Charlton Copley of District 9. He's a hoot in the showy, if underwritten, role of H.M. Howling Mad Murdoch, a certified and certifiable pilot. It's clear from the 20-minute credits sequence set in Mexico that this A-team is less interested in any kind of coherent storytelling than a collection of elaborately ridiculous stunts featuring the stars and their doubles, like the team firing on aircraft from a tank attached to a parachute. One thing for sure, Mr. T was no fool to turn down a cameo. So I'm giving the A-Team two stars out of four. I'm Lou Luminick, and you can find my reviews at nypost.com.